Okay, so the first thing I want to say here is if you do not understand what a covert narcissist is, or if you are not sure if you're dealing with one, please go check out the information on the playlist that I have above here in conjunction with this video, because we're not going to talk so much about what covert narcissists do as how to deal with them. So an, one thing to really understand, dealing with a narcissist and a covert narcissist in particular because they are sneaky and they look like everybody else and they don't run around acting grand, getting all the attention. Okay, they, they to everyone else in the world, they're a nice person. To everyone else in the world, they're helpful, they're kind, they're friendly. No one else sees it. Okay, so it is super confusing and it can be really like a mind trip dealing with them and your life around them. So the number one thing, it is not your fault. You are not creating the behaviors of the toxic person. You are not creating the way the covert narcissist behaves in relationships. That's 100% them. That is who they are and how they are. So please understand that because there's nothing you can do to change who they are. So how do you deal with them then? How do you keep going if you can't get away, if you choose not to get away, if they are a family member, you're, you're low contact with there's someone at work, how do you deal with it? Let me know in the comments as we watch this what you guys think and how you're dealing with it in your life, okay? Because the more information we get out there, the more we can help other people. One thing when dealing with covert narcissists is they are highly sensitive to criticism. They are highly defensive. They need to believe the mask that they wear that says they are the good guy, the good gal, the nice person, the friendly one, so self-aware, so nice, so kind, so helpful. They need to believe that. If they don't believe that, they go into a full-on narcissistic meltdown. So in order to do that, when you are doing any form of gray rock with them, it is way more beneficial for the situation for you to start with yellow rock, okay? Start with a more, let's just say, business polite way of handling the gray rock situation. If you go full on straight up gray rock with a covert narcissist, you're going to be met with a temper tantrum or avoidance or a shutdown or something that is counterproductive to diffusing the situation. Remember that gray rock and yellow rock are not punishments. They are tools for helping to diffuse situations when you cannot get away from toxic people. So yellow rock might look like, it might look like adding in a thank you or a please, or I hear you, or, oh, that's interesting before you state your opinion. And it might mean reducing your opinion to a gray rock opinion. Oh, that's interesting. I see. Instead of I see, which would be more gray rock, right? So adding in slight niceties, so to speak, to the gray rocking, not to be a doormat, not to think you're going to make change in the situation, to de-escalate the narcissistic tantrum that will follow if they are met with a full-blown gray rock. Have you tried yellow rock before? Let me know what you think. And also the thumbs up if you like this content and you want more about covert narcissism. So for yourself, okay, how do you deal with them? Mostly when we say, how do we deal with them? What we really mean is how do we change our behaviors and our lives so that we're not so entangled with them? So one really big tip here is emotionally distance yourself from the narcissistic person as much as you possibly can. If you are low contact with a narcissist, keep it that way, okay? Need to know information only. Don't let your emotions fall into the back and forth drama, the asking about their day, the listening to their stories. Just keep it short, okay? Keep it simple. If you are in a relationship that you cannot get out of or you do not wish to leave, then emotional distancing can look like giving them attention but not needing anything back from them because you have other people in your life you can share those details with, friends, family, therapists, coaches, okay? That is unfortunately how it has to be because the closer you are emotionally, the more emotionally dependent you are on them, the more emotionally that you need them, the more they can manipulate you and the more they have you in this trauma bonded state of not being able to function without them. Surround yourself, and this goes with the last thing I said, surround yourself with friends and family that are good to you. If you don't have anyone in your life, seek support, please. Coaching, group coaching, 
therapy, clergy, you know, anything where you feel like you can get some individual attention, some, someone to actually listen to you, someone to validate you, someone to hear you for who you are, right? Not just some general listening, but actually listening to the point where they are trying to help you with your life, okay? And help and just be there for you. It's important. You're in a situation of emotional vacancy because a narcissistic person cannot truly give in a relationship. So if you are stuck in a relationship with a narcissist for whatever reason, or if they are your parent and you have chosen to stay in contact with them or whatever it is where you can't get away, it's really important to have people who truly listen, to have that contrast between the life with the narcissist and what it feels like to be around people who care. Okay, without that, the loneliness is crushing. And I'll stop here for a second and say that if you do need coaching, please check out the information in the main description of every video. Lots of information there about ways to find support. So really, I'm just gonna conclude here with self-care for you, less focus on them. Okay, less focus on the dramas that they're bringing up. Really learning to let it go when they think they need to be right. Okay, of course they need to be right. They're narcissistic. They have to be right. There's no other way for it to be except for them to be right. So give them their narcissistic whatever. Who cares, right? Do you. Focus on you. Self-care. I have an entire playlist of self-care videos, and I can make more if you need them, so please check that out. There is activity there are activities there are friends there is nature there is athleticism and sports and there is art creativity music these are just naming a few right there are places to pour your energy that is not the toxic person disentangle from needing to control things with them and instead manage it down so that you can have a happy life even if they're still in it if you are not sure if you're dealing with a covert narcissist if you're not clear what the warning signs are the red flags how covert narcissists behave and if you don't know if you have one in your life check out the videos here and maybe that'll help you to get some awareness that will go along with this video to help you then know how to deal with them. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm here to help you understand and heal from toxic people in your life and transform your life after narcissists have been in it. So I'm not advocating staying and I'm not advocating leaving. What I'm saying is you know what's best for your life and if you need to get out, there are ways to get out and there's help out there. So please get the help you need if you're trying to get away from a toxic person as well. You guys take care, I'll see you next time.